a really big announcement we've officially released our first wallpaper pack in a few years called wonderlust which is a subtle play on the new iphone 15 release this wallpaper pack will look really good on any screen size up to ipad for this release we aim to create an engaging digital pack of eight dazzling images that truly come to life on your screen well it's good fam i feel like it's been so long since i made a video the place looks kind of crazy so i have to actually pack today because i'm going to be flying from new york later in the day to san francisco for work So one thing I've been struggling with is this luggage bag because as a tech dude, I thought it was more important to have the carry on by away with the battery charger built in opposed to having a luggage bag with an expander. I actually never use the charger, but I'm always running out of space. This iPhone has 256 gigabytes of storage and is in the natural titanium colorway. As you can tell in terms of the overall build, this phone isn't that different from the iPhone 14 Pro. Before I head to this new coffee shop in Brooklyn, I'm gonna airplay some lo-fi to my Sonos speakers while I pack my clothes. And I actually was surprised that the speakers were already connected to my new phone. I also need to review my Google Calendar, which is filled to the max with a bunch of meeting invites I haven't even accepted yet for my upcoming work trip. tell you that I love you 100 times a day you'll get tired of my to be honest there's not a huge difference between the iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 15 Pro and I know there are a ton of videos out there where people take deep dives into the specs but for me this video is more of a day in a life of me preparing for traveling from New York City to San Francisco going about a typical day using the 15 Pro. Now the one difference that I could tell right away between the 15 Pro and the 14 Pro is the titanium materials. One, the phone is definitely a lot lighter. The 15 Pro has more contoured edges, so you can tell that it feels a bit more round in my hand, and I just feel like the overall grip is a lot better than the 14 Pro. So living in New York, walking everywhere, constantly on my phone outside, whether it's listening to podcasts or just on Google Maps trying to figure out the route to my destination, I'd say I feel pretty comfortable out here with no case. So we ended up spending too much time trying to validate my driver's license for the Revo app scooter and decided to take a city bike because we're running a bit behind schedule and needed to rush back home to reshoot some pictures for an upcoming campaign. After returning home, we took some IG stories using the 15 Pro's 48 megapixel main camera and RAW Max. Pictures look amazing. The 48 megapixel camera captures stunning details and vibrant colors, making it a great option for high quality photography. Finally making it into my Uber for this hour long ride to the JFK airport, my new favorite app for traveling is called Flighty. It has a really engaging UI that gives you a ton of details about your flight from the departure gate to the age of the plane and even the history of the previous routes it took that day. I also spent some time using the Bible app to relax and spent some time talking on the phone with Lee before arriving to the airport. Yo, I'm really tripping. I got to the airport, JFK at that. If you live in New York, you know how crazy JFK is. An hour before departure, somehow, through with clear i was able to get through all of security in like 10 minutes not even also this is a good way to test the front facing camera it just looks very similar to the 14 pro 
Um, my 14 Pro had a bit of water damage, so my camera just wasn't very good. I had to like wipe it off a ton. Nonetheless, looks pretty good. The lighting here is pretty, it's not low light, but it's not very bright. And I think it looked pretty good and, it's, and, it's, and the footage isn't falling apart at all. I've been pretty active on my iPhone since waking up at 7 a.m. this morning. And as you can see, I had five hours of activity. The Revel app used most of my battery power. Due to the extensive background activity of rideshare apps, they consume a significant amount of battery power. So I decided to wait a good 10 hours before charging and checking my battery activity and usage. After using it for 10 hours on a travel day, my battery percentage was depleted only at 7%. I think on a normal day, you could expect battery performance to be better because Google Maps and GPS service apps tend to require more power. All right, so we just touched down in a bay, plane ride, was not the smoothest, some of the worst turbulence I ever experienced. As a matter of fact, the pilot said that the, the weather or the wind clipped us. So we went, up, we went up to higher elevation to avoid the really rough winds. Nonetheless, we here, God is good. So now I'm about to head to the hotel and um, I really just need to, to shower and wash my face. Like I just feel like my face is so dry. Finally landing in the bay, I'm really excited for our developer summit, getting a chance to meet my teammates in person from all over the world. Moments like this make me so grateful. So that pretty much wraps up this day in the life traveling from New York City to San Francisco. I honestly don't think you could have a longer direct flight unless you're traveling from New York to Alaska or Hawaii. So we really put the iPhone 15 Pro to the test today. I think overall it performed well. Mm -hmm.